All right. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope that you can all hear me clearly. Um, if for any reason you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, now, for the benefit of everyone, I would just like to make sure that everyone is aware that this session is being recorded. Um, so as long as everyone is aware that this session is being recorded, um, that's all good. Um, I would like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Sadia, and today you are all attending the session uh, using PenCat for quality improvement. Um, I work for the Northwest Melbourne Primary Health Network, and I work as the Workforce Development Program Officer. And our lovely colleague Manfred from PenCS will be um, running the session for us today. Now, before I launch full steam ahead into presenting the session, um, I would like to um, acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land um, on which we are meeting today. Um, and I would like to um, pay my respect to elders uh, past, present and emerging. Um, and so thank you all very much for joining us today um, to by attending this session. Um, Manfred will be providing a fairly interactive session and we are hoping that you get as much out of the session um, by putting questions into the uh, chat box or through chat. So if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. Um, you can put the questions uh, to me directly um, or into by putting them into the chat box to everyone so that, and I'll monitor the questions throughout our um, session today. Moving forward, I'd also like to request that um, we will be taking registrations or we will be marking attendance. Um, so we will be crossing it off against the registration name with which you registered. Um, so if your name is different from the name with which you registered, um, if you're attending with a different name, then please kindly note um, that we wouldn't be able to tick you off um, if you are attending today with a different name. So kindly do ensure that your name is the same um, with which you registered. Um, I will just touch on some housekeeping for all of us, if that's all right. Um, please keep your microphone on mute. You are all muted, but throughout the duration of the session, if we can please keep it on mute. Um, as requested earlier, please um, use the chat box function, which is um, for asking questions. We will also, uh, there'll be a question answers opportunity at the end of the presentation. Um, and uh, if your question is not answered, then we will organize your PHN relationship manager to contact you. As already advised, the session is being recorded and please ensure your name in the Zoom meeting is correct. What I will do is from here forwards, I will pass on to Manfred, but before I do that, I will just quickly introduce um, Manfred. Um, so Manfred has a lot of experience in all things to do with uh, PenCat and Popa. Um, he is a multidiscipline professional with customer service and IT experience. And he has all 15 years of experience in GP networks and Medicare locals. So, um, Benford, are you happy for me to drive the slides for you? Yes, please. Not a problem. So I'll move on to the next slide then. Great. Um, thanks for that. Um, I would like to, to, to thank you all for uh, an echo of what Sadi just said before. I uh, welcome you all to our training session on quality improvement. Uh, the learning outcomes, uh, as you can see here, it should give you an improved understanding on the CAT plus functionality, uh, on the purpose of why using CAT and why using the top application, and then how we can use CAT more uh, efficiently for quality improvement at the external practice, uh, and some of the functionality uh, we use in CAT for views for and reports uh, to actually drive that number and to drive the 
uh, get a better understanding on how our practice is uh, working. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, the uh, cap plus and quality improvement of the practice, uh, as you know, and that's probably not something I need to uh, repeat because I'm just put that one down. I have that right in front of my screen here. Uh, is that under the PIPQA, and that's where our quality improvement kind of sits in. It's not just, I'm not just doing it for the PIPQA, but I'm doing uh, quality improvement at my practice for various reasons. And one is because with uh, uh, a high degree of high quality data in my practice, my uh, reports, my knowledge about my practice whereabouts are a lot better and I, I can make better informed decisions. All right? So that's why I like to tie in quality improvement with PIPQI because there's the incentive, but there's another incentive for yourself to do it because when you go for accreditation, and uh, you're being asked what are the systems uh, for you to, to measure quality improvement. And uh, you may answer the question, I don't know, it might not be too good. But if you say, well, we're using the CAP Plus for, uh, for that one. And here's, have a look at the report here, have a look at the, the systems we have put in place and here see the outcome. Uh, you will be flying through accreditation, right? And I know that one from experience because that's what we, uh, did in the past, and uh, I do know still some of the surveyors uh, around. Um, so under the, the PIPQI, I'm just reading that one out as it is an interesting one and it sort of applies to everything. A practice has to show they're undertaking uh, quality improvement activities. In our understanding, this means medical centers have to apply the PDSI cycles methodology was similar to demonstrate uh, these activities to measure the outcome. Now, what it means in hindsight, it, it's not frightening. It's actually quite, quite clear. And it's actually for us a good guideline to say, okay, well, first of all, I find something. Then I, then I decide what I want to do about it, where I want to be with, with my findings in what time. And then I will apply my, my system and we'll, uh, uh, through a, a whole practice uh, approach, we'll engage my whole team of health providers, nurses, managers, uh, receptionists in, in that work. And then in no time, you know, uh, with step-by-step -step implementation, I will improve my practice quality. And by that one, my decisions will be way more uh, informed into what I make uh, people or uh, 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 patients with certain chronic conditions will fall less likely through the through the radar and you will be way more on top of uh, how you provide it. If that uh, idea, what I will show you today and you implement that one into your PIPQI as well, you will find out that you will uh, have all the necessary tools really to improve on your quality. Can we go to the next slide, please? So uh, the focus of the session here is, as we said, on the data quality, data cleansing, using the built-in reports. I will give you a couple of examples here. We can use the filters to identify certain gaps in my database, but then I will go to the inbuilt report, the, the, the CDSA report, to get a good understanding to where my practice is at with its data quality, and then go to the data cleansing reports to get a better understanding on what do I need to do and how I can do it. And then we will identify these patients with an indicated and chronic, the, uh, chronic disease and, um, and the ones with no uh, coded diagnosis. All right, and then we will probably will switch here into uh, top bar as well, uh, if I get the chance. Can we go to the next slide, please? So I have just put some of the, the resources on, on our website here. Please feel free to uh, connect to them, download the, the help files. I will show you through a couple of resources I have um, uh, prepared. Uh, mainly you will find them under those links anyway. So uh, if you want, uh, you can take a snapshot of it or we can provide it with a copy of those links then afterwards. Uh, all right, I think that's pretty much of my PowerPoint. I wanna just hop into the, um, the live, demonstration now if we swap the screens and uh, let me just quickly go into that one here and I will be just sharing my screen in a tick
One moment, that won't be too long. Okay, let me just, that's what I don't need here. That close, I've got a couple of two things open here. Now, um, need to get that open, share screen. Okay, can you let me know that you can see my screen? I haven't been working with Zoom quite for a while now. Yes, we can see your screen. Great. Okay. Um, now, I won't need that one for the time being here. Okay. What you can see on the screen here is uh, my setup when I work. I have now Cat4 open, as you can see uh, here. I have Top Bar open on the top. And the fact that it reads a patient name means that I have a uh, clinical software open as well with a patient open, say, um, and we will get into that one a little bit later, but that's the scenario here. We, we try to assume that we are at the, at the chain of practice and uh, one of my roles as the practice manager uh, or maybe even as the nurse, it depends on how you structure that one, will be to identify areas I want to improve on. Right? Uh, that could be because of we're going undergoing accreditation. It could be because of the PIPQI. It could be for various uh, uh, reasons, or because you want to make sure that your yeah, uh, your chronic uh, chronic uh, disease cohorts are more reliable. That means that uh, all of the the patients with A conditions are recorded for uh, reporting on medical item numbers and so on. Uh, what we can see here now is having CAT open here, as you can see in the top, you've got some of the icons, some of the, the buttons you can click, collect, report, a uh, few population CAT for. And I won't go into that one too much into details because uh, that will be for another session. And I'm assuming that you already have been working with uh, the CAT4, but what I wanted to point out just before we start, I have got, I have already gone ahead. I have already selected my most recent data extract, and it has already populated into my uh, report view. Now, the uh, the uh, the extracts are hidden. If you can't see them uh, on a little button here in the, uh, on to your left, say if you click on that one at your practice, you might have that one ticked, and that means that height the identified data actually, which I would assume uh, for a medical center to do so, because what you don't want to see is the de-identified data extract because they don't help you. You at the practice want to work with identifiable data because you want to know who is behind uh, those uh, bar charts who are the, we are, where we have taken the measures. But since that is a training we are uh, doing today, I'm working off a de-identified training data extract uh, to ensure that no uh, information or no uh, population information can be uh, shared or uh, re-identified. So in that case, it is a de-identified data set. The way I selected is I was just clicking on it and then it uh, started to populate it in. I won't click it now because otherwise it will start repopulating it into the system. Now, since I have loaded my latest data extract and don't need uh, to see all the other extracts anymore. I can hide uh, my extract panel and I can leave it uh, with a little, uh, with a bigger picture now with my filtering panel and my uh, report panel. Now, as I said, filtering panel up, he up here, you have all your filters available from general ethnicity, conditions, medications, date range, uh, results, date range, visits, uh, patient name, and so on. And below here, you got your uh, reports available for your investigation for querying your uh, data. Now, for the ones who don't know how it works, it's not a live integration with your clinical software. You collect the data on a monthly basis, and uh, CAT4 connects to the, connects to that data extract itself uh, and provides you uh, with the information for you to apply filters to query. Uh, the database. So that means uh, under no circumstances while working with um, CAT, you will interfere with your service providers doing work on their patients and so on. It's a complete separate system disconnected from your database. Now, uh, the, the reports itself. Now, for example, the way a CAT works is very simple that I want to identify a patient cohort I'm looking at, I'm interested in, and then apply my reports to find out what it is, what I need. 
right? And in that case here, I got several filters in and I could say, okay, one is to work out my active uh, patients and the inactive. And that means by active, when we talk here, active by RSCGP standard, all right? That is uh, RSCGP standard. And that is not the active in your, or the active for your total population in your clinical software because the total population in your clinical software is made of all the uh, active patients and uh, we have excluded the inactive and diseased patients are not extracted. So uh, only your active that is total and those are different to the active by RSCGP standard and I will show you that one. As you saw when I change over from any to active, the button here changes, it, it turns red, it says if you want the filter to be applied please click recalculate. And when we look into the 12,442 patients I currently have, once I apply the filter, I will drop down to 5,421 patients, meaning that actively 5,421 patients had free visits in the last two years. So, if you wanted to know how many patients uh, uh, how many patients did not visit my practice or had visited my practice in the last six months, 12 months or whatever, you can define that one and you can say, okay, has not visited in the last, make it 36 months, which is about three years. And if I click on that one, I have about 2,711 patients here which have not visited my practice in the last three years. Now, that might be a list where you might think, you know, you might take it out and start uh, archiving uh, these patients. You might, might put them, uh, uh, mark them as inactive in your clinical software and so on. So there are some help files on, uh, on the website, and I think that medical director and best practice provide uh, opportunities of uh, group marking uh, population or patients for uh, marking them inactive. Uh, we do have some information on that one on our website too. But as you can see from about 12,000, we have about 2,700 uh, patients which haven't visited my practice in the last three years. Now, if I would do it last four years, I'm still would be probably allowed the, um, I, I I guess it would be still about the 2,000 something uh, mark here. So it won't probably change too much in the number, uh, but actively I really look into a database which has about 10,000, maybe nine and a half thousand uh, active patients uh, for uh, uh, of my patients here. Now, the other way before I go into the, the reports itself, I want to show you a very quick way how you can apply some filters. As you know, when you apply filters here, let me just recalculate here. Every time I do a change, uh, a setting change, a filter change, it will prompt me to recalculate, which I've done now. Now let's assume for a second that I wanted to know what is my current diabetes population? And if I would say, for example, if I click here uh, on top of that one, it will look into type two diabetes or type one or undefined. So compared to if I would select it in that way, it would say I'm looking for a patient who has all three conditions at the same time. And that's not what we want. We want to look into patients with one or the other condition. And that's why I will not use that one. I will do that one. Let's have a look how many patients do I have. Now, if I look from 1,200, I have about 652 uh, patients currently diagnosed with any form of diabetes. And please remember the, uh, the number here because we will be dealing with that number throughout the whole session today. And uh, I will show you something that my diabetes cohort, in fact, is a lot higher than 652, but I just don't know yet. Uh, what I want to do, I want to just quickly identify and find out how good is my uh, rec record keeping on the on the diabetes patient by just using some filter. As I said, what happens if I would look for a patient who has either all two or all three conditions? Now, as you know, uh, that should give me a nil value. And if it gives me a nil value, then I have done right. But in that case, it shows me a a value of uh, two patients having currently a diagnosis with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Now, there's no such thing, a duplicate uh, diagnosis, not for diabetes. 
So that means I might have to take that one already offline and say, get to the, uh, to the doctor the best way. And that's sort of where the system comes in. How do I communicate that one? And to whom? You know, who are the patients? Now, first of all, if I wanted to know who are the patients, the quickest way to do is either select it or go on few population. And if you click on the few population button here, you will see it will re-identify the two patients for you. And it will put the assigned provider in. Now you can take that one to the assigned provider here and say, look, would you mind checking patient A and patient B? Both of them have a duplicate diagnosis. Uh, only one works. Uh, we might need to remove the other, all right? And I have completed that one now. Once I've passed it on to the, the, to the health provider, he will then take care of that one and will take it offline. If I do the same filter uh, two months again and it's still the same, then I will probably ask again quite nicely and say, please, please, please do that for me because we, you know, we, we don't know, do we have to group them into type one type of monitoring or into type two type of monitoring and so on. Now, that's, that's one thing. Now, the other uh, report when we increase our data quality is not just, uh, you know, by standard here, when we talk about diabetes, there is just a type two or type one. There is no undefined. Uh, in, in, the, in the medical terminology, there is no such thing undefined diabetes because it can be either type one or type two. Now that means that everything what is running under the undefined is currently not really considered as type one or uh, type two diabetes. Now in that case, that would be a, a, a next step that I might take those 57. And again, uh, pop, click on populate, click on the list, and you can uh, use the little arrow keys. I just forgot to say there are little arrow keys. You can't see them, but when you hover over with your mouse, you can see how it changes from uh, an arrow to a, a, a hand. And if you click on that one, it just makes it visible and lets you sort. Uh. Now, in that case, you can sort it to whatever by, by, by providers. You can sort it by, by patient name, by date of birth. Uh, in that case, probably sorting it by a provider, design provider might make more sense. And then you can take it and then save it, save it as a PDF, save it as a HTML or any uh, file type what we have here. And then uh, take that one, put it into a, a communication, uh, communicate to your provider and say, uh, please find a list. Or it might be something you pass on to the nurse to say, okay, can you go through, uh, through that list and identify if they are type one or type two because they're currently identified as uh, undefined diabetes. And by doing that one here, you will find out that your di the diabetes population here, let's go again with uh, all three here and go to our, um, uh, where we, uh, disease tab. Let me just hide the, the, the filter tab here. And of course, we're looking by diabetes now. So everyone who is uh, di diagnosed with diabetes, but also has other conditions. All right. So as you can see here, you've got 57 undefined, 49 diabetes uh, patients with type 1, and 548 with, uh, 548 with type 2 diabetes. Now, once you have fixed that one, the number here with your type 2 and type 1 will change and will accordingly adjust to the new measures. And then you can apply the services specific for their uh, needs and reasons. Now, that is how you can use filters and there are a lot of other filters you can uh, uh, can use, but um, I, I want to show you now uh, a couple other features in in CAT4 how you can lead into quality improvement. So um, that's why we will stop uh, here a little bit. And I know that uh, Northwestern Melbourne has scheduled other webinars, other training webinars to your, your channel practices. Uh, uh, for this year, so please take the opportunity to just to join and we will look into uh, some of these uh, key areas then in more detail. Now, okay, I'm just going back to my start and what I want to do here is uh, going back to general. I've reset all my filters as you can see here that the, that the tracking trial here is empty. Every time I would apply a filter, it will write in uh, by what I'm uh, tracking and searching. Now, for what I'm doing now, I don't need a filter. Well, in hindsight, no. But 
it depends. When you do uh, accreditation type of work, you know, there's the surveyors say, well, we want you just to look into everyone who had visited you three times in the last two years. If you do data quality for yourself, for your practice, because you want to improve your own uh, chronic disease registers to have a, a, a better foundation to run your uh, reports off, then you would not apply uh, the free visits. But let's assume, let's assume for the moment I am running through accreditation and I want to step by step lead into quality improvement with my organization. I want to have a step approach. I don't want to hit my service provider uh, with the, 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 the big deal because I know I will lose them on the way, but I want to bring them so slowly on board. I want to bring them on my journey. And that is, that is very important. So I will use that one to my advantage. All right. Now you will find out patients with a chronic condition should be in here anyway, because, um, you know, patients which have a chronic condition usually anyway already more often visit the practice. So the chances that you will lose any of that one should be rather slim. But if you have uh, new patients to your practice, new patients with diabetes, new patients with a mental health, new patients with um, uh, a renal impairment or whatever it is, those patients would not be considered because they would have to show that they had three visits in two years. And they might have two visits in two months if they had three visits in two months, well, or two uh, three visits in 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 any time you're running the reports, that's fine. But if if they don't meet the criteria, they will be excluded. So that's why it is sort of a a, a point where you need to make the decision when you use uh, that filter. But as I said, for accreditation purpose, that's all what I want, and that's what I uh, do. And I will recalculate. And from a filter point, that's all I need. And as you can see. When I do data cleansing now, I don't have to do it for 12,000 patients. I just have to do it for 5,500 patients. And that clearly will reduce my workload. Now, uh, we, when we move over here, the reason why I feel close to field is because I do no longer need it. So therefore, it is uh, gone for me. Uh, I will use now the report tabs, and the report tabs will give me all the information I need and require. Now, when we use, uh, as you can see here, a report tab called data quality, and I will click on that one, wait until it loads. Now, why is it blank? Because when we start pet and uh, 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 upload the data into all reports, we actually just populate the information in the most commonly reports. Some of the reports are not uh, populated right from the beginning, and that's why you might have to wait sometimes uh, until they are populated. So uh, when we look into the CDSA uh, or the data quality dashboard here, what we can see is a traffic light system followed by a percentage. And then you have some information where you can, uh, can go and get further information. Now, although it's just a fifth edition already out for you, uh, we have been informed by um, RSCGP that the fourth edition still suffice for uh, that very purpose. It still discusses, there haven't been any uh, changes really say uh, you're more than welcome to use the, the fourth edition for that one, what I'm about to tell you. Now, when we look into the traffic light system, as you can see already, everything, what is green, I'm doing very well. Uh, I have been working on and, uh, you know, they just need me to monitor, stay on top of it so I don't turn them into an orange or red again. Uh, but it means that I am there, you know, when I look into the orange, that means there's some work I need to do, All right? And when I look into the reds, that means that I'm not really performing very well. And there's more work I need to do uh, to improve the quality because ideally you want to try to either get uh, the red ones into orange and the orange ones into green because that's how we do. We tackle down once one area, we work on that, we improve on it, and then we move on to the next one, you know? And if you move on a multiple smaller areas at the same time, but do it in small chunks, works exactly as fine than if you will, if you would take one area, work on that one, and then take the next one, okay? So when we look here in allergies and adverse reactions here, you can see that uh, I'm at 84%, and I have an orange dot, and as the, the item here already kind of says allergies, and adverse reaction, it means that the component is made out of two 
areas compared to medicines, medical history, uh, health uh, risk factors, and so on, are uh, all one and so on. Now, 84% would be te theoretically not bad, but that means that one of the two areas may be neglected. But looking at it, I know at the, at the glimpse here now, where do I need to put my efforts? Right? I know medicine is a big chunk. I will have to do a lot more. Relevant social history and non-duplicate patients, that is in my case uh, always read because of all my patients are called uh, patient, uh, patient, patient, something. So please ignore the color here. Uh, you will have a lot less duplicates in here than I have. Uh, due to the, the, the identification of the data extract. So let's, let's assume, okay, let's start with allergies and adverse reaction uh, for our first, and then let's see what we can do, work our way down and make, make health risk factors the number two of my uh, quality improvement. And then I will pick one of the, the red ones, then after the third, another fourth, and so on, and progress so slowly through. Now, how do I do that one? Now, whilst I know where I want to start with, I need the information to what is it, what I really need to do. And that's what I do when I go over to the data completeness report. And here you have again the breakdown, allergies and adverse reaction, medicines and so on. And if you look at the percentage here for the allergy status recorded, I'm doing almost 100%. So that is an area my support, my, my doctors, my nurses, everyone is recording that one. Uh, to the bone. They're doing very well on that one. But when it comes to the allergy recorded in a coded format and uh, the adverse reaction, that's where I need to improve. So if you can see here, a recording that is done, well done. But I have two areas I need to bring at least over to uh, over 80%. Once I've got them over 80%, then it will be an easy one for me to make that, that item from, from an orange to a green. Now, looking into medications here, if you look into the medication coded reasons for uh, prescribing uh, the recorded the denominator, the number of the script for legible population. Now, I'm not doing very well because what we do, we don't put the, 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 the reason for the prescription on or maybe not in a coded format. So there is also room to improve. Now, the way it works with that report, you can pick out one, you can pick out all if you wanted to, but you can export that one to an Excel, PDF or Word document, or you print it out, uh, because that one will be at just one page of one and take it to your next meeting and say, okay, guys, uh, we have decided to work on allergies and adverse reaction. That's what my meeting would be about to say, whilst we are all recording the allergy status very well and we're doing really, really good on that one, we need to work a little bit on our allergy, on the coded format, on the reaction of uh, the allergy. And once we have lifted that game up, uh, then we will move from orange to red. And when we go next time through to the surveyors uh, and they look at that one, then they will see that we had also improved in that area. So we're talking here already of a, of a system, right? What I'm, uh, where from my finding, I'm communicating it in a, in a staff meeting and then I'm monitoring it. After that one, I will keep an eye on it. Am I doing bad on it? Has there been any changes on it or am I? Uh, yes, you can see allergy recorded, no known allergies and nothing recorded. So. Uh, you can use the report filters itself to look into to uh, pick out the, the ones which have nothing recorded and work on them by, by simply clicking on the, on the segment and view the population and bring them in. You know? So you've got the, the surname, so you know who is, who is not recording the allergies and then you work. But as I said, we're doing here quite well. That's not quite the intention here. For that one, but those are, are kind of set measures here. Now, as you can see, I've forgotten to deselect here. You could say clear filters here, and I don't want to clear my uh, my filter for uh, the um, for the active patients. But I only want to clear the, the filters of the report selection down here. Then I tick that one, click OK, and that will leave the filter in place. But I just select my uh, report selection here and the allergies. Now, as I said, now I know what I need to do. I know where I need to improve. I have, uh, I know what it is. I'm very specific now. I really can look into uh, those two areas and enhance them that they uh, come on board and do 
uh, the work on that one. Now we have, if you go, uh, the data completeness graph here, as you can see here, again, is a visual breakdown of what the, the, the report I have given you. It might be sometimes a great, you know, to, to look into that one and have a look and say, okay, look, that's the allergy status here, the not recorded ones, here the allergy status, here the partially recorded ones and uh, the not recorded ones. And if you can see the breakdown here to the, to the very right here, recorded, partially recorded, not recorded and so on. And you could say, okay, let's, let's take uh, of the two reaction, the ones which, uh, which have been partially recorded, fix those ones up, then it will move us into the green. And then at a later point, we will look into the not recorded. Or you say, okay, hang on a minute, we got here not recorded. We select the two graphs here of the, uh, of the not recorded ones. All right, then I might select the two parts and I wanna work with those patients and get them uh, recorded. And the same like with all, you could click, uh, could click on a uh, few population or you use uh, the worksheet here and click on that one. And what it does, it gives you based on my filter criteria of the ones I've selected, the allergy coded and not recorded. Uh, from the data, it gives me everything what is also missing of the patients here. As you can see here, family history missing, um, also family history missing, uh, if they have a, a carer uh, and, and so on. So now when you work through those lists, bear in mind you have one of 46 pages. So if you use the print button, you might block the, the printer for quite some time. But uh, the best, what works for me always is exporting them to an Excel file and work off the Excel file and, and take it down. Um, so that's the worksheet you can print out, or if you want to just the, the two in a very quick way, you can click here on the view population and you have your, uh, oops, uh, no, um, sorry, when you select the graphs here, you cannot use the view population here because it will take what's the whole, the whole information of the graphs. So you will have to use the, the, the worksheet uh, to do that, uh, to get the information of the two, or you're going to use the, uh, the uh, the allergy slide uh, report for that one, but what it is basically it allows you to to tackle down to select whatever you want uh, to use in your report, and if it's the the two or if any of them you know or if it's multiple that you wanted to work on, you just select them, and then go into view worksheet, export that worksheet, and uh, start working off that one. And while you're working off the worksheet, you will see that you uh, so slowly will enhance your quality. Now, uh, with that one here for practices which are on medical uh, director or best practice uh, ZMAT, they could use TOPA instead. And with TOPA here, it will also give you the information about um, about your patient now in my case here, there's not much to see unfortunately because my patient here is uh, fairly good with the information we have been recorded, but I just wanna open the, the, the filter tabs here. Uh, please note there will be a TOPA uh, webinar coming. So I won't go into depth into TOPA, but uh, what it allows you as well to look into the, the, the item you wanna be prompt. You wanna see what is missing if it's now, um, date of birth you can choose, you can untick the ones you don't wanna see in your prompt and that will then uh, update your, uh, your, uh, your prompts in, in top bar. So you have the ability to choose what you wanna see and what you don't wanna see uh, for uh, both. Now, going back to here, and I thought I could see, uh, you got the data items already completed. When we look at the data items for uh, the demographic or the data items for the, for the clinical here, you will see that these follow a strict uh, rule by the RSCGP. Everything, what, uh, everything RSCGP suggests makes a complete data set you will have uh, here on the screen. All right. Uh, I will get into that one uh, in, a, in a tick and we'll show you a little bit more about that one. I just want to go back to my uh, CAT4. Now, whilst we know all that one here, we know the, the graph, we know where we need to set in our, our work. Now, let me just clear the filters out. Now, we do have the same reports and that's where I kind of was already leading for uh, showing you the ones in... in um, 
uh, in, in top bar. Now, when we go in here, that will take a while now to populate, but it hopefully will be coming shortly that it's loading. Uh, you got here a range of uh, demographic, missing demographical, missing clinical uh, information. Right? Um, you can save it again to an Excel PDF file and uh, export the, the pages. So I'm still loading. Here we go. So as you can see, um, am I now on the indicated side? It's just not where I wanted to go. Um, uh, not sure why I'm not seem to get any information in here at the moment. Um, it's probably still pre-calculating um, on, on that one. But what it is, you have the, the information uh, available here. Uh, where uh, with with so it looks like a a, a, um, a worksheet, and I'm not sure have I. Put, let me just uh, turn off all the filters again and. Uh, see if that does a, a, a change, recalculate, here we go, let's turn them off, I'm not sure why, what happened here now with the filter, I'm just leaving it off now for the time being, but I want to show you what it is, as you can see here, everywhere where something is missing, uh, it basically puts a red line in, and if, the, if you're opening it in either best practice Medi medical director ZMET and you double click on the information, it will open the patient in the clinical software. What you need to do is then just to direct to the, to the field where you can enter the information. Now, if you enter the information in the clinical software, it will not update that one here because uh, CAT4 does not work with a real-time integration into connection to uh, your medical system. What it does, it extracts the data on a monthly basis, and that's what you're interrogating. See, once you're finished with updating your database and you run rerun a data extract, then you would see the changes in um, in CAT for that is different to uh, top bar, which I will show you in a second. If I look into the clinical information, you can see here uh, all the patients with a missing. Uh, clinical information, if it's their allergy, height, work, and so on. And as I said, you can export those lists to, uh, to uh, a PDF, to Excel, and so on, and then work off uh, that one. Now, what we also have uh, is the indicated CKD. And I want to just before, because we're running a bit behind on time here, what I want to show you on, uh, on the diabetes uh, with no diagnosis. Because as I said to you before, we had about 546, I think it was, patients uh, currently in our cohort. Now, in fact, if I would look through here, and I have about 152 patients here, which uh, kind of had taken any, maybe some uh, diabetic type of medications. They might have had a HbA1c value, which was at a certain value. Uh, and a uh, FOBG, a fast uh, blood test, uh, test, which was also elevated and so on. And based on that information, CAT uh, puts it into a, a traffic light system again and says the likelihood possible or review. Now, bear in mind why we do that one is because those patients have not received a coded format of diabetes yet in your database. That's why they're sitting here. Now, you can take that list and say, okay, look, we found patients which have a, H, a HbA1c of 6.2 and an FBG at 6.1. Are their diabetes, have they been classified as diabetes or not? If you see here, we got here a patient in red who is taking a, any type of uh, diabetes medication and had a HbA1c of 11.6. What happened to the patient? Has it been diagnosed with uh, diabetes? Yes or no, because if it's not, then do we, do we have to re-monitor those patients, bring them in again, check, have a checkup with them to see if they are or not a uh, uh, diabetes patient. And on the very last page here, and I will skip the other ones because they've worked from the principle in the same mess up, but on the last one you can do for diabetes checks, uh, the HbA1c above, uh, H, uh, above uh, 8%. It looks at the type 2 diabetes here. And what it does, uh, the screen here is again, lets you, if you click again on all of our rows, if you click on a top, it lets you uh, basically sort. So you can change the number of class, say one, four, something, or HbA1c. But let's filter by HbA1c. For example, here you can see that 
uh, that patient has a fairly H, a high uh, uh, HBNC value, is using one type of drug, uh, which is the SLGL2. He's not on any uh, GLP-1. He's not using any insulin. Now, the patient of usually is diagnosed with, in that case, it's, it, there is diagnosis behind with type 2, but the medication itself, what may be administered to the patient, may not be sufficient. There might be some changes uh, needed to be done, and that's what you can use uh, the report uh, for uh, enzyme. But I want to just very quickly go into the same here, um, into uh, TOPA. Now, as I said, the same indication we have here indicates that diabetes with no uh, recorded condition, uh, COPD with no coded condition, and so on. And based on the findings we had, and now TOPA is a life integration with your clinical software. It, 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 once the patient presents at the practice, uh, TOPA recognizes the patient and then updates uh, our uh, apps accordingly to the, the, the findings. And, and so on, as you can see here, uh, indicated problem for, uh, for this with no diagnosis is that the patient had a uh, script of a particular medication received on that one. And based on that script, that script was never taken off. Now we wanna make the doctor aware uh, or the nurse aware that uh, a diagnosis never happened. Uh, is the medication to be taken out of, um, of the list? when you do a diabetes review or a medication review, or in fact, has the medication been given or was a new medication and the patient has the uh, diagnosis. Now with, um, with uh, diabetes, as I said, the similar one, TOPA basically checks into, uh, into the medications in the HbA1c and the fast blood glucose tests. If they're at certain value, then uh, we... Um, pull out the information, say, hang on a minute, there might be something, you know, taking the medication has taken the item number, but no diagnosis. Have, what do you want to do with that one? And in that case with Topper, I can easily take that one, click on add to sys. Now I left, let go of the mouse, let Topper do the rest of the work. And here we go. It opens it up and says, okay, type the diagnosis in. Now, before I type in any diagnosis, I usually like to check first. All right and want to see if there is any uh, diabetes diagnosis of the patient. And if I look here, there was one done in 2016, but it's not a coded format. And why I can confirm it's not coded is if I go over here, even the clinical software says uh, not coded. Now, when you work with those patients, those patients will fall under the radar because they're not being picked up by the clinic software. They're not being picked up by CAT because we don't know that the patient is diabetes, you know? But what I can make so that the patient no longer falls under the radar and receives the services they need, I can change that one. And in that case, I will change the diagnosis of, of the patient uh, to a, a coded format. Uh, I'm sorry. Diabetes uh, and change that one to uh, type one or type two. In that case, it's a type two diabetes. Click on OK. And now, as you can see here, when we click here, it gets the coded uh, name, the coded format, and it's an active now, and it is uh, a active uh, diagnosis. And therefore, uh, now I know that the patient has. And now, what happens in Topa? As I said, Topa does take the advantage that it. Uh, realizes um, your, your work and therefore it no longer prompts you for, uh, for that uh, indication of a particular uh, not, diag uh, not coded uh, diagnosis and so on. And you can see here, now we've got here all the other ones, the item numbers and uh, whatnot. Now I can go through and now do that for all of them. You know, if that is now for um, the chronic uh, Oh, Andrew, my apologies for stepping in, but we're now five minutes over the session. So yeah, you I'm just wrap about it up? To, yeah, yeah I'm you. wrapping it up. Uh, just thought to give you the last one where the, the issue could be a uh, medication, you know, uh, where you could then say, okay, look, that the medication no longer is needed. And 
therefore I delete, delete it, take it off the reason is uh, completed without any problems. I leave it as uh, maybe at a late, an earlier date here because that was 2018, for example. Oops, doesn't it take it? 2018. Okay, now it goes off and you will see that the, 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 the review for the diagnosis also disappears without uh, putting a code in because it's not always that the patient has the condition. It's sometimes we had recorded information to a patient which no longer is relevant and therefore doesn't uh, require a coded uh, condition or something. All right, uh, that's, uh, thanks for that, Said. I'll hand over to you now. I'll stop sharing my screen. If there are any questions, Please feel free. Um. Excellent. I'll um, hand it back to, uh, we've got Susan um, in the participants at the moment. So Susan, if you have any questions, um, you can either unmute yourself or type it into the chat box as you wish. Um, and Manfred, if you want to stop sharing your screen, then that would be, um, yep. That would, Susan, if you, do you have any questions or do you want to put it in the chat box? Manfred, uh, this is Yvonne here. Can I ask a question on behalf of Susan? At Susan's practice, they use Medinet? Yeah. So will they be able to do everything that you've just showed us today? Uh, no, uh, Topa will not work on Medinet. Uh, Topa is only uh, compatible with best practice medical director in ZMED. So Medinet uh, will not work, but they could use um, as much as the, the data extract, which is pro uh, provided by Medinet itself. So Medinet is one of the software applications, the data extractor, it's done by Medinet. Medinet provides the extract to the practice and they then use CAT4 to interrogate the data. Now, if the data is all in the Medinet data extract, then you can do everything what I have shown you uh, from a CAT, uh, CAT, CAT4 point of view, except uh, top bar. Okay, sounds uh, good. There is a part on the website where, I, uh, let me just see if I can find that one and maybe share the link with you. It's about the compatibility of, uh, of our products and it, you would find that one if you go to help.pensies.com.au. Perfect. Well, if you and send that to me, I can then forward it to the practice. Clinic and billing. Yep. Let me just, here we go. Just paste the link in here now and then uh, yeah, the, the patient can forward it to you uh, at, at any point. Great. Thanks, Manfred. Susan, anything else you can add in the chat if you wanted to? You're our last standing participant. <laughs> I think one of the links is here as well, which is www.pencs.com.au. And what I'll be doing is that I'll be sending out a, an email. And in the email, I'll include all these links um, to the resources that um, Manfred has kindly provided. Um, and if there's, um, we do have some other sessions coming up on uh, Pen. Um, so I will be providing slides to that as uh, or information um, on those sessions as well. That's the Manfred is providing us with an information session on uh, using CAT for COVID uh, vaccination reporting. Um, and another one that may be of interest to any practices um, who have an accreditation session coming up is that we will be providing um, a session on supporting practices with accreditation. So what I can do now is I'll stop sharing my screen and um, I'll just, um, thank you so much, Susan, for attending today. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to liaise with uh, Yvonne and we will um, have the information provided to you. So thank you to everyone who attended the session today. I really do appreciate uh, you joining us. Thank you all. Thanks. <laughs>